Hello everyone, this is JD from Benchmark, and today I'm going to show you how to define curves using Kogo in Microsurvey CAD. Kogo, or coordinate geometry, is a broad topic that seems overwhelming at first. Especially with curves, there are multiple tools that are useful in different situations. The trick is to know which method of arc calculation is best suited for the job at hand. To get started, go up to the top and click MS Kogo. Then click CAD Curves Dialog, right here. This is the Kogo Curves box. If you click on a line, its properties will be listed on the left. These boxes on the right can be used to create new curves. Compound and Reverse create curves based on other curves, while Tangent, Two Tangent, and Three Tangent create curves based on lines. Let's start with the Tangent option. Click it, and then click the end of a line. Now, enter the radius of the curve, positive for clockwise and negative for counterclockwise. I want this arc to curve this way, so I'm going to type negative 10 and then click OK. You now have four different calculation methods for the length of this curve. For this one, I'm going to choose delta angle, aka change in angle. To make it easy, I'm going to type 180 for 180 degrees and click OK to create a half circle. Next, let's do a two tangent arc. Click CAD Curves Dialog and then click Two Tangent. This method creates a curve that's tangent to two lines. Click the first line, then click the second. To finish, enter your desired radius and then hit Enter. As you can see, this creates a sort of fillet between these two lines. Next, let's do a three tangent arc. Click CAD Curves Dialog and then click Three Tangent. All you have to do is to select the start, middle, and end lines, and MS CAD will draw, in that order, a curve that's tangent to all three lines. Now let's move on to the curve-based arcs. Click CAD Curves Dialog and then click Compound. Compound starts a new curve by curling it in the same direction as the previous curve. So click the end of a starting curve and then enter your desired radius for the new one. Let's say 5 in this case. Next, choose the most appropriate length calculation. This time, I'm going to click Chord Length, which is the length between the endpoints of this arc. Because my radius is 5, if I enter 10, I'll get another half circle, as you can see here. Notice that it's curling in the same counterclockwise direction as the previous arc. Next, let's do a reverse arc. Click CAD Curves Dialog and then click Reverse. This curls the next arc in the opposite direction as the previous one. Again, click the end and type your desired radius for the new arc. This time, let's hit Tangent Link, which is the length of a tangent line starting at the arc's endpoint and ending at the other end's tangent line, exactly as you see here. So just enter your desired tangent length and hit OK. Finally, let's do another compound. Like before, hit CAD Curves Dialog, then Compound. Click the end of the line, type your radius, and then hit OK. This time, we'll do the last length calculation, which is arc length. Since this is the length of the arc itself, if I type a value close to pi, it'll make another half circle. Couple more things. In CAD Curves Dialog, if you hit List Curve and then click on any arc, you can see all of the information for that arc right here. Lastly, there's proportioning. Proportioning allows you to break up an arc into smaller pieces, which is perfect for staking. To do so, just click it, select the relevant arc, choose either equal or distance divisions, hit enter to start at the end with the arrow, type the number of divisions or the length of each division, and then click yes to delete the original arc. As you can see, I've divided the arc into five equal segments, each with a point at either end. 
And that's about it. Please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps us out. And if you have any questions about this video or about any others on our YouTube channel, please give us a call at one 286 3204 or visit our website at bench-mark.ca.